I'm digging through these. I got this, this really isn't a question. Tennessee is pretty hopeless as well. Tennessee was one of the six states this year. They did get facts, findings, and conclusions of law um, added in this year. And they are one of the 12 states that's going to have a 50-50 bill get introduced. And right below that, we got what about Missouri? Missouri, the same thing. They've had a 50-50 bill in the legislature for, I think, the last five or six years. It will be getting reintroduced this year. Um, I believe it got held up in Senate committee last year. But uh, um, yep. there are. Yeah. So, Call your yeah, 100%. I was just at a conference about a month ago in St. Louis and actually had the opportunity to interact with some of the legislators that are pushing this. Um, if you're in either of those states, if you're in any state, you'd be surprised the impact of you picking up the phone and calling your legislator, especially you, if you're in a state where there it's either small population or large state legislatures. These people may only represent 15, 20, 30,000 people. And how many of those people are actually calling their legislators? If you have a group of five to seven people that are calling state legislators asking for this, it's going to get on their radar. As I said, we're at, we're at 12 states are going to get introduced this year, or 12 states as of today that are going to have 50-50 legislation introduced. We have two that already have let 50-50 legislation on the books. So if that's something you want um, if that's something you are, are pushing for, uh, do a quick Google search. If you can't find who your state representative or state assembly person is or who your state senator is, I, I really don't know what to tell you, but the email. snowball is rolling downhill. I'll tell, I'll tell you. If you want to email me, I will tell you who your representative is. I promise. You're, you're a bold man for making that proclamation. <laughs> so. Um, all right. So we, this is a quick one just to clear up. So 7.30, it looks like, Ryan, you put uh, 7.30 and corrected it. Yeah, 7.30 and 31.11 are similar in the state of California. One's under um, the evidence code. The other one's under the family code. Small differences, but yeah, those are the evaluation um, the, where they're found in the code. All right. Let me, I had another one here. Let me, let me get back to it. We'll wrap up with uh, one more question here. All right, so I'm going to kind of parse this question apart because I think it's it's a good one and it's something we talked about earlier. So Ryan here, um, they dragged their feet for 11 years on a modification, then said um, they would not have any more hearings. So what I want to pull that to is you talked about in Oklahoma, you got the one shot and then you're going to trial. What do you do when opposing counsel or the opposing party is dragging their ass and is, is not moving forward, maybe not playing ball on discovery or whatever the necessary steps are to get to trial. Call them every day. No. <laughs> Will you, I, it, it sounds like this is an issue that was dealt with today. In the office. <laughs> Probably the starting point would be the proverbial nasty gram or the, I mean, the official term is the deficiency letter. It's like, okay, you haven't done this. You haven't done this. You haven't done this. And you want to establish that paper trail. So that when and then if they're still not cooperating, you file your motion and then you have the paper trail to take to court with you. Show the judge, look, I tried on this occasion, I tried this, I tried this, I tried this. They're not playing ball, jack them up. Yeah. No, I agree. The other thing here is why is it being delayed? Okay, so we need a pre pretrial conference order. So you're gonna send you know emails periodically, sign this pretrial conference order. If there's a discovery problem, make them um, make that clear. Uh, otherwise, you know, what what's what's the fucking holdup, frankly, right? And mm -hmm. uh, call them every day. Yeah. I mean, I, I I've called uh, lawyers incessantly on cases where I thought they were were holding up my clients. So. Another, I, I, yeah. I'm sorry to jump in there, Keith. Another tool you can use to avoid that, to proactively avoid that problem, in Oklahoma, the, you can get the judge to order a, to enter a scheduling order, which puts deadlines in place, yeah. and that's a good that's a good move to do early on, especially if you have a case where you know it's going to get ugly. You know, you have 
people that really hate each other or there's they have a lot of assets or there's kids and they really disagree about what to do with the kids. You get that in place because it puts a clock in place and that will force them to move along because if they blow a deadline, they're going to have to explain to the judge why they blew the deadline. And, yeah. same, and, and, and I think unfortunately some of this is that I always tell clients in the micro level for the individual, the court process moves slow. I, I can tell you for, at least in my experience in practicing, um, it feels like it moves a lot faster for attorneys um, and, and for people that are in court every day. And if someone's not playing ball, it just simply is going to take more time um, because of all the steps you mentioned. 